Hi, I'm Claire from Bright Barks and Puppy School. Today I'll be talking you through grooming a dog. Why it's important, the different coat types that dogs have, a little bit about the process of grooming and how I groom my own dog, Hiccup. The grooming and maintenance of a dog's coat is a very important part of a dog's care. If done gently and kindly from puppyhood, with lots of positive experiences, grooming can be an enjoyable experience for both the dog and the human. Grooming is important because knots and mats are uncomfortable and if left can twist into the skin causing cuts and injuries. A large volume of mats can inhibit a dog's movement, especially under the arms or around the legs area, or it can create a mass that can become solid and heavy on the dog's body, which then becomes a welfare issue for that dog. Mats and thick fur also offer a perfect hiding place for fleas and other parasites such as ticks which cause health problems and discomfort for the dog. Good coat care allows for the removal of thorns, prickles and other materials that can get lodged in a dog's coat. Grass seeds are a large concern in the summer months, as if left they can cause serious injury to the dog. Due to their pointed tips, they can penetrate the skin and migrate into the dog's body. The most commonly affected areas are the toes, ear canals and armpits in dogs, so shortening the fur, particularly on the feet and under the armpits, as well as regular grooming, will help to reduce the likelihood of them becoming tangled in the fur and moving into the skin. For some breeds, good coat care is essential because it helps to maintain the water and dirt repellent nature of their coats. With all that fur, keeping cool is really important to dogs and most of their sweat glands are located on the pads of their feet. These sweat glands are not enough to keep their body temperatures under control, so they rely on other mechanisms to help them. Thermoregulation for dogs involves panting. As the dog exhales hot air from inside his body across the throat, mouth and tongue, the moisture evaporates to keep them cool. And vasodilation, which is the expanding of the blood vessels near the skin surface, allowing warm blood to cool before moving back into the body. Regular grooming also ensures good coat condition which allows the air to circulate freely between the hair and skin which in turn helps to keep the dog cooler. There are many different coat types of dogs. The coat type refers to the differences in texture and length of the fur and whether it's a double or single coat. Varied coat types require different methods of grooming and present different challenges. Short coated dog breeds are generally smooth coated with their fur laying close to the body. Although shorter coats are easier to care for, they still need grooming and care to ensure the best condition. Medium coated breeds have slightly longer coats than short coated ones, with hair typically about an inch long which may stand off slightly from the body. Medium coated breeds require regular brushing because the longer hair, particularly on the legs, known as feathers and tail, can become easily matted. Long coated dogs require regular grooming to keep them neat and free of mats. Long coated breeds have hair that is long and flowing but with all of that hair comes a great deal of daily work to keep the coat tangle free. Many people choose to give them pet type cuts where the hair is shortened or bobbed for easier maintenance. Some breeds have a double coat, an outer layer of thicker guard hairs and a different undercoat of thin lightweight hairs. A double coat provides insulation. In cold temperatures it keeps the heat in and in warmer weather it keeps some heat at bay. Double coated dogs will shed their thicker winter undercoats in response to seasonal changes and during this time it is important to remove the dead hair preventing matting and allowing maximum air circulation to the skin. As the weather cools again the coat regrows for winter.
wire-coated, also known as broken-coated breeds, have a harsh, wiry outer layer of rough hair. It is stiff and stands away from the body, especially on the tail, the back of the legs and on the face, often with pronounced moustaches, beards and eyebrows. Maintaining the distinct texture of a wire coat requires hand stripping rather than clipping, as this can change and soften the texture of the coat over time. Stripping a dog's coat is a technique that takes time and practice to learn and master. Without it, the guard coat will not grow in properly. Plucking the dead, blown coat stimulates the hair follicles to produce new guard hairs. The hair should release easily and without force by working the direction of the hair growth and applying grip onto the hair, therefore stripping it out of the coat. Use of clippers on wire coats results in a change in both texture and colour. Both clipping or scissoring removes only the outer length of the hair, leaving the rest of it still to shed out. Clipping also leaves the guard hairs the same length as the undercoat, rendering it useless as protection from the elements, losing its weather-resistant quality. Curly-coated breeds have hair ranging from soft waves to tight curls. As the type of curl varies, there is no single way to groom them, so professional grooming for these coats is usually necessary. Some breeds are kept in tight clips, others in a looser wave, and some coats grow into cords. Although not very common, some breeds are considered hairless. They usually have a fine down on their body or crests on certain areas, but no hair, so to speak, which makes them popular amongst allergy sufferers. Although this means there is no grooming needed as such, hairless dog breeds are more exposed to the elements, so they require special skin care to keep their skin from drying out and to protect them from the sun. Extra protection in colder weather is essential too, as they have no natural coat insulation. Dog grooming refers to both the care and cleaning of a dog, as well as the process of altering the physical appearance of their coats. Dog groomers are those who learn and practice this skill. Groomers operate from a multitude of premises, from small pod units to larger grooming salons, or even a mobile dog grooming service right to your door. Most grooming premises have bathing facilities, a dryer, either a hand dryer or a kennel dryer, and a grooming clipping area. The care and welfare of the dogs is the main priority when grooming, so consideration of every individual dog's handling preferences, their grooming tolerances, and extra care for their individual breed types is essential. Brachycephalic or short-faced dogs and double-coated breeds are those where particular care has to be given in relation to potential overheating with water and drying temperatures. Knowledge of the needs of each individual coat type as already covered is also essential to ensure that the best care is given. There are many different grooming tools. Each will be used for different types of coats. Here are some examples, such as shedding blades, slicker brushes or rakes. Wire pin brushes are more used on the hair of long, wiry, wavy and curly coated dogs. Bristle brushes, much better for shorter coated dogs or those brushes with longer bristles as a finishing tool for long coated dogs. Various combs can be used through coarse or fine coats. Stripping combs and knives are for the harsher, broken coated dogs. And you have shears and clippers and scissors for dogs that require clipping. And thinning scissors are normally used for cutting the bulk hair out of the dog's coat or for blending lines to produce a smoother finish on a clip. A dog's coat is more than just how they look. A dog's coat type is an important consideration before selecting a breed type to come into your home, as coats can take a lot of time, effort and expense to keep in good condition. Your dog's coat is also an important indicator into your dog's health. Thyroid conditions and parasites, for example, can affect the skin and coat, and a dry, brittle, dull or greasy coat may indicate an underlying medical condition. Coat pattern changes are also important to watch, as these can signpost areas of change in the underlying muscles and areas of pain and discomfort related to muscle strains, hip dysplasia, injuries, etc. Look out for the appearance of new curls, swells or flattened areas. This is Hiccup. Hiccup is my Cavapoo and he has really long fur 
which tends to curl and knot when it becomes wet in the rain. Because of his poodle part of his genetics, he doesn't shed his fur like normal dogs. Instead, he drops clumps of fur when he gets a little matted. So we need to be careful with regular care of brushing and bathing to keep his coat in good condition. Some owners choose to have their poodle crossbreeds clipped. But because I like Hiccup long and hairy, I've chosen to keep his coat long, but do keep his face and hygiene area short to make sure that he is comfortable. I also trim his feet because they act quite like sponges and get very wet if his fur grows too long. I also make sure that his ears and his nails are treated properly so that he's in really good condition. Today is Hiccup's bath day. So before we get started, we like to set up the environment properly to make sure Hiccup is comfortable. So we have a nice sticky bone at the end of the bath, which has some cream cheese in it so that when he gets into the bath, he's got something tasty to make sure he's happy with where he is. He also has a nice non-slip mat. This is really important to make sure he feels steady and comfortable as he gets bathed. Creating positive associations with the bath right from puppyhood is really important to ensure that dogs really enjoy the experience. Effective shampooing using the right product will help to keep the skin odour free by cleansing and conditioning both the skin and hair and promoting the production of natural skin oils. Certain shampoos will also help with parasite control and treatment. It's really important that we use a dog shampoo rather than a human shampoo. The pH of a dog's skin is mildly alkaline, whereas ours is slightly higher in pH. So it's really important to use the correct shampoo to provide the best care for their skin and coats. When bathing a dog, it's very important to wet the coat thoroughly before applying the shampoo. Water temperature is very important. Too cold would shock their system and too hot may cause them to overheat. So it's really important that the shower is warm. Hiccup likes a nice warm shower. Once the coat is thoroughly wet, the shampoo moves through the hair and over the skin much more easily. A good massage of the coat also helps to remove debris and dead skin cells. Once thoroughly massaged into the coat, it's now time to rinse. This needs to be done very thoroughly to prevent any shampoo being left in the coat. After a full rinse, it's time for drying. Firstly, Hiccup is surface dried with the towel to get rid of the large percentage of water. After his towel dry, he really likes to have a five minute zoomy session around the house where he likes to rub himself all over the floor. As Hiccup's coat is so thick, he would take a long time to air dry and it would be quite wet and uncomfortable for him for a few hours. So as a baby, I taught him to enjoy being blow dried. I use a hair dryer myself and it's really important that the temperature is correct to be sure that he's kept comfortable and does not overheat.
teaching a dog to be comfortable being hair dried is essential before we can use it in a grooming session. This is a slide of how to take it slowly to teach your dog that hair drying is a good positive thing to be sure that you're going to have a dog that's really comfortable in the future. It is much easier to groom a dog's coat when the hair is dry. Groomers will clip or brush through the coat before they bath the dog and then once dry will finalise the clip or groom at that point. When brushing through the coat of hiccup I will find any mats in the fur and stop before taking time to either carefully brush through them a little bit of a time being careful not to pull against his skin or I will use something called thinning scissors which takes the hair out in even sections to relieve the bulk of the knot and it makes it much easier to remove. There are lots of different grooming tools available on the market. Each one will be suitable for different coat types. It's worth looking at what type of coat the dog has to then decide what type of grooming tool to use. These are the ones I use for hiccup. The last part of Hiccup's grooming session is his nail care. Long nails can be prone to breaking and splitting. And they're really painful for dogs and often require veterinary treatment. As long nails hit the ground, they also cause pressure, which puts force on the foot and leg structure, which reduces the traction on the ground and can also cause tendon damage to the dogs. So shorter nails are much healthier for them. A dog's nail consists of the living pink quick and a hard outer material called the shell. The quick supplies blood to the nail and runs through the core of it. Nerves in the quick cause bleeding and discomfort when cut, so regular nail trimming will cause the quick to recede from the end. Short quicks are often the preferred length for the dog's well-being and easy maintenance, so you can consider clipping regularly or grinding your dog's nails if often easier as it slowly sands down the end of the nail. The final floof. So after the bath, the drying, the hair drying, the grooming and the trimming of the face and the nails, this is the big fluffy creature at the end. Thanks for watching.